beautiful Brie, and I'm just outside enjoying this beautiful fall day. And you know, a lot of people like to have a little wine every day, but personally, I don't like it. I can drink it, but the only way I really like it is if I make a wine highball and add some 7-Up to it. It seems to really offend people who know their wines. However, I do love homemade grape juice. I think you will too. Let me show you how. Most of us are familiar with the health benefits of drinking wine. According to the Mayo Clinic, some research studies suggest that red and purple grape juices may provide some of the same heart benefits of red wine, including reducing the risk of blood clots, reducing the bad cholesterol, preventing damage to blood vessels in your heart, and helping maintain a healthy blood pressure. So, let me show you how to make homemade grape juice. Try to get grapes grown without pesticides. Grapes from your home garden is always the best. We put in four vines this year, but we won't have our first harvest for at least a couple of years. If you don't have your own grape vines, visit your local farmer's market or search Craigslist for a local grower. I got these grapes from a local farmer who used to supply Welch's at one time. This Concord variety is very sweet and makes great juice. So it's time to get out your steam juicer. I am using a 11 quart steam juicer. If you watch my channel much, you know I love my steam juicer and find it very versatile. It is very easy to make grape juice using this juicer. First, fill your water bath canner about three quarters full of water. I always add a little vinegar to prevent the clouding of my canning jars since I have well water. If you have city or soft water, you don't need to add the vinegar. Place your canning jars in the water bath canner to sterilize. You should boil the jars for 15 minutes to fully sterilize. If I am processing multiple batches, I sterilize my jars and then place them on a cookie sheet lined with a towel and place them in a 200 degree oven so they are hot and ready for the grape juice. Okay, now fill the bottom pan of your steam juicer to the top. Add the lid and turn the burner on. While you are waiting for the bottom juicer pan to reach a rapid boil, wash your grapes and let them drain in the top pan, the juicer basket of the steam juicer. You do not have to remove the grapes from the stem. You can put the entire grape cluster in the juicing basket. I mean, how easy is that? Pack the grapes to the top of the rim. Once your bottom pan is boiling well, place the middle juice kettle on top of the bottom pan. Then place the juicer basket that you have filled with your grapes on top and cover with a lid. Set your timer for 60 minutes. Do not lift the cover to see how the grapes are processing during this time. Because lifting the lid may cause condensation water to fall into the bottom pan and dilute your juice. Be sure to heat your lids while the grapes are juicing. You do not have to boil the lids. One hour has passed and now it's time to fill our canning jars with juice. Your jars need to be lower than the bottom of your juicer so that the juice flows freely through the drain tube. I use a kitchen bar chair with a baking pan on top. This seems to be the right height for me. Grape juice stains so be very very careful. I place a hot sterilized canning jar in a bowl on the pan. This way if any juice spills it is contained in the bowl. The juice is scalding when it comes out of the drain tube, so be very careful not to burn yourself. A word of warning, always check your drain tube to make sure that the clamp is securely pinching the tube. As you will see, uh, I made a mistake and did not do this. I hope you can learn from my mistake. Place the tube in the jar and release the clamp and let the juice flow into the jar. Fill the jar leaving a one half inch head space. Repeat this process until the juice no longer drips out of the tube. To be safe, you should water bath can your juice. Wipe the rim of the jars with a damp paper towel and place a warm lid on the jar. 
Place a ring on the jar and finger tighten. Then place all of your filled jars in your water bath canner and process in boiling water. I only have to process for five minutes, but depending on your elevation, it might be longer. If you are making multiple batches, please be sure to refill the bottom pan to the top. You must never let your bottom pan run dry as this will ruin the pan. Some people place glass marbles in the bottom of the pan before filling it with water. That way they know if the bouncing marble sounds stop, the pan is dry. Personally, I have never found this necessary. After the processing time has elapsed, remove the jars and place on a towel on your counter. Hopefully you will hear pings indicating your jars have sealed. This is what the grapes look like after being processed. They are not pretty. They're shrunken and a lot of the purple color has faded. After 24 hours has passed, remove the ring, check to see if the lid has sealed, label the jar, and store. Now you can drink homemade grape juice all winter long and reap the health benefits. A word of warning, if you taste the juice straight from the jar, you will be very disappointed. You must add sweetener in order to have it taste like commercial grape juice. How much you add depends on the sweetness of your grapes and your own personal preference. Some people add sugar before canning the juice. Um, if you do this, however, you won't be able to use this juice to make grape jelly in the future. I processed 30 pounds of grapes today. The grapes filled the juicer basket three times and I ended up with 31 pints of juice. Your yield might be less or more depending on the juiciness of your grapes. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe and share the knowledge.